See that main source of energy for a process that we not for that calculation of the sun. Solar radiation. And again, when I say the solar radiation, it's basically from visible objects. Visible, I have infrared microwaves and radiations. Out of that, visible and IR radiations are basically responsible for heating and all that. Whatever we experience is from these two radiations, visible as well as IR radiations. Okay? Now, if you look at the equatorial region, let's say the energy is applied here. When the energy is applied here, what happens is that the equatorial region gets heated. Right? When it gets heated, it in turn heats the atmosphere of the When the atmosphere in temperature increases, density of the air increases and then it rises. So this is rising and then it goes over here. Because here, at the surface polar region, the temperature is 2 degree or 1 degree, where it is around 30 degrees. Sea surface I Okay? So here, the density of the air is more in the sense that sea surface is very cold. And as a result, the air in touch with the sea surface becomes very denser and it sinks down. But here, there is a continuous heating. From here, there is a continuous heating. And as a result, the air rises and goes. Now, why does it go to polar region? This could be explained on the basis of possible thermodynamics. Here, when you have, this is a depletion of air. Air is rising, so there is a depletion of air. Here, air, therefore, air sinks and then all the way coming back here and then Compensate the depletion of air But this is not exactly what is happening in the atmosphere. What I have shown here is a hypothetical earth, wherein earth is made up of that which is not constantly heat capacity and earth is not rotating. This is an example. So if earth is not rotating and everywhere on the earth you have water, this is the kind of circulation we can Okay? In other words, there is a heating here and the density of the air decreases and increases. So there is a low pressure over here, there is a high pressure over here. Because when the air sinks, I want to make sure that the heat capacity of the material across the globe is same. If that is the case, what happens to the atmosphere? However, that is not the case. So if you look at the actual earth, if you look at the actual earth, you find that, same way here, first and foremost thing that the land and the ocean in the equatorial region gets heated that internally the atmosphere above that and then the air rises. When it rises and goes up here, earth is rotating from where to where? West to east or east to west? Earth is rotating from? Earth is rotating from? Is it rotating? Yes, yes it is rotating from west to east or east to west? So east to west. East to west? Today is 11th in India. And which day is America now? 12th or 10th? Where is America? West or East? Oh. So America is at 10th, right? 10th in July. So to see 11th, it has to further rotate in this direction. That means that it is rotating from West to East. To see the Sun, it has to rotate further. That means they have to wait, America has to wait for further one day to see the sun. Right? So earth is rotating from west to east. Please keep that in your mind. Okay. Now, so what about on any moving body when the body moves with respect to the rotation of the earth? See, first I have shown a hypothetical earth. Maybe earth is not rotating, it's stationary. Then we find that the air which is rising from the equator all the way going to the pole and then sinks down. Okay? So that's creating a low pressure in the equatorial region and a high pressure in the polar region. But we know that Earth is neither made up of the constant material of constant heat capacity nor it is stationary. So when you allow the Earth to rotate from west to east, what we find is that the air which is rising from the equator, when it tries to go to the polar region, is being deflected towards the right in the northern hemisphere as a result of polar force. So we do will have three different cells. One is Hartley cell, another is thermal cell, and the next one is a polar cell. So there will be three cellular circulation in the atmosphere. Okay? This three cellular circulation is appropriate or is fine as far as the Atlantic and Pacific is concerned. If you just go back to what I said earlier, Atlantic and Pacific has a free function of the Arctic as well as Antarctic. 
Therefore, the circulation pattern, atmospheric circulation, prevailing over the Atlantic and Pacific are replica or mirror image. But where it differs is over the North Indian Ocean. So we would find that hard cell is completely disturbed. Ferro cell is absent in some season. Okay? Let us try to see that. Yeah. Now look at this. Yeah, this always cover the crowd because the moisture laden water is being risen and then that converges and then when it rises, concentrate takes place and cloud and then finally precipitation. So this is the ITCZ. So this ITCZ or the intertropical convergence zone is above the equator as far as the Pacific and Atlantic is concerned. But if you see the Indian Ocean, you just look at this blue line. If you see the Indian Ocean, we find that there is a you know the uh, movement of ITZ, especially this is during summer season, during yeah. During summer season, you find that ITCZ is over the Asian continent. Yes, you can see that. That means the convergence is not exactly at the equator, rather it is shifted towards the around 20 degrees north during July. July means it's an autumn summer. When do we have summer? Of which hemisphere we have? India is in which hemisphere? Northern hemisphere or southern hemisphere? Northern hemisphere. And you also know that the Earth is inclined about 23 and a half degree with respect to axis. That is the main reason for our season. So it is rotating about its axis, revolved around the sun. Okay? So we have, and we have, for example, when Northern hemisphere has summer, people in Southern hemisphere experiences winter. So when they have summer, we have winter. Right? So our summer is from June to September. So this is the period where we get rain. Now what is the reason for this? So during July, you see the convergence is above the continent. I is an intertropical convergence on. This is a convergence between two wind patterns. I am not going to tell you the which wind. Because just with one glass you may not get that. But just keep in your mind that there is something called an intertropical convergence zone. Have you heard about tropical region? Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn. So that tropical region, two winds are coming and converging. Okay? This is exactly the equator as far as the Pacific and Atlantic is concerned. However, over the Indian Ocean, it is not the same. Reason is that, or the reason behind such a you know, migration of such a uh, difficulty is due to bring you a very simple thing where you can compare our uh, monsoon with the, that of land and the sea breeze. What do you mean by land breeze? You are all on the coastal region. When do we get land breeze? And what is meant by land breeze? When do we get land breeze? Land breeze means breeze of the wind from land to ocean. Sea breeze means from the sea to the land. In a day, we get land breeze and sea breeze. When do we get land breeze and when do we get sea breeze? During daytime, what do we get? Land breeze. Remember that wind is always flowing from high pressure to low pressure. So during the daytime, what happened to the land and what happened to the ocean? Energy is supplied from the sun. Correct. Now the peculiar of the specific heat capacity of the land, if you see, it gets heated faster and cools faster. So during the daytime, what happened over the land? It, it heated faster. But in the case of ocean, it has something called mixed layer. So all the energy that is being supplied is stored in the ocean. So over the ocean, compared to this, you find a high pressure. And over the land, there is a low pressure. Why there is a low pressure? Because land gets heated faster and it's also releasing the energy. I mean, to consider this as the atmosphere. Atmosphere, atmosphere like an ocean. Or you consider this as atmosphere as a vessel. Where you keep on the stove. Energy is given from the bottom. And same way here, during the daytime, you find that the land gets heated fast. So when this heat is water level, heat is released from the land to the atmosphere. As a result, the density of the decreases and it rises. So you have you can expect the formation of the development of the low pressure over the land during the daytime. But high over the ocean. So from ocean to land you have a circulation with the daytime. And this is called the 
land base. Sorry, this is called sea base. And uh, land base is during the night time. Okay, so from the high to low, remember that this you keep in your mind that the wind is always flowing from high pressure to low pressure. So why do you show that inter on the globe? Can you show that intertropical conversion? Yeah. Tropical water to the grid south, southern and northern grid south. I see. I T C is intertropical conversion. Yeah. Uh, Twenty degrees to towards equator north. I can tell you. During uh, <coughs> July, it's very cold. Yeah. Because of the Spatial heterogeneity of the heating of the land and the ocean. But to make you understand that, I thought of explaining about the land and sea base. Okay, so let me complete about the land and sea base. So during the daytime, you have a breeze from sea to land. Sea to land. Correct? Because you have intense heating of the land from the solar radiation, and there it's a high compared to this high. Why this high? As I said earlier, the land gets heated because of the specific heat capacity. The land gets heated faster and cools faster. So what happens is that whatever heat energy is received, it releases and then it heats the atmosphere above that. It is similar to the vessel containing a water kept on the surface. The heat is given from the bottom. So same way you have the atmosphere, which is almost like a vessel containing water, and that is kept from the land. Land is giving energy from the bottom. Then the molecule gets what do you mean the temperature? How do you define temperature? Degree of movement of molecules, right? Kinetic, kinetic temperature, kinetic energy. Kinetic energy of molecule increases when you give more and more heat. Right? So the temperature means degree of movement of molecules. So when this is given, what will happen? Density decreases. Density is mass per volume. Therefore, the air rises. That means there is a depletion of air over the land to compensate that air is coming from ocean to land. So this is your sequence. But during the night time, what happens is that it's only cold land. So here you have the high and there you have the low. So air starts coming from here. Exactly the same thing happens in the case of your monsoon. Okay? Here in July, you have high pieces are over the around 20, 21 and half degrees north, and during January it comes below it. Let us try to understand the reason for that. Okay? During summer, I have a slide here. Yeah. During summer, during summer, what happens is that you have a Tibetan plateau. You have the north, especially if you take this land. So you have the land and you have the ocean. So in the north Indian Ocean, you have both Arabian Sea, Arabian Sea and Bay of Bengal. Correct? So let us try to understand during summer what happens. Summer is Okay, let, let me ask you like this. Uh, March, April, May, what exactly you feel? You feel very hot here. March, April, May, very hot, right? Temperature may come up to around 36, 37, like. But in daily, you may even find 40, 41, 42. Correct? So that means that the land is getting heated to that extent. But the material with which the Tibetan plateau the material is such that it has highest heat capacity. So therefore, all the heat energy received there is stored, and there the heating started. So as a result, you find that low pressure started initiating from March onwards. Okay, so low is going on, going on, going on, and then by uh, May, end of May, or maybe beginning of May, it is intense. Then what happens? Then the air finds, I mean, the, the, the system finds that there is a large depletion of air because the air is rising. Then from here, from the ocean, air starts moving out there. So that is your, yeah, that is your, you can see this, that, that is your southwest monsoon. Why it is southwest? Now, why it is called southwest? In the case of uh, you know, meteorology or atmospheric science, 
we give the terminology in such a way that from where wind blows. So it is from south to west. So therefore we say southwest monsoon. And because it is during really summer, we say summer monsoon. Okay? Now, another very important thing is that you see, I said about IPC cell. Correct? In a tropical colour. Now let me also tell you what are the winds responsible for that. South of the equator, we have something called the southeast gradient. SCT. South of equator. Why are called trade winds? Yeah, because that has been used for trade in the past. <coughs> Therefore it is called as trade winds. And then north of the equator we have NG. That is north of the equator. So these two are converging at the IT season. So please keep in your mind that our Pacific and Atlantic at the, it's exactly above the equator. But in the Indian Ocean it is not so. It is around 22 and a half degree during summer and below equator very cool. Okay. Now during summer what happens I will tell you. This weather is absent during summer. In the Indian summer months I am explaining. Any it is absent. Because the ITC has already shifted to a solid kind of ITC. And then there is an intense law there. So a wind has to compensate the depletion of air of the Tibetan region. That wind is nothing but this SCG. I think I'll draw here, otherwise, there are no, no borrows. I'll draw this here. This is your India. This is Arabian Sea, this is there. And here is SCT. Okay? So let me try to explain how this uh, summer monsoon, southwest monsoon occurred. So this is from June, July, August, September. So these are the four months during which we get Indian rain. Correct? Now, here there is a low pressure during this period. Because there is a land, and I told you there is a large difference between the heat capacity of the land and the ocean. So land is heated faster and cools faster. So as a result of the heating, from Mars onwards it is getting intense heat. So as a result, this internal heats the atmosphere of the Then density of the air decreases and low pressure. But here it is high pressure. Okay, so there is a high. But then this has to be supplied or this has to be complemented by some other wind. That is the SCT. What happens is that when this air tries to move here, because there is a depletion of air mass, that has to be compensated. Therefore, air moves from here, wind starts from here, and this is being supplemented by this SCT, and it crosses the equator. When it crosses the equator, you know, because of Coriolis force, it turns to right. And Coriolis force F is equal to 2 omega sin phi, where phi represents the latitude. That means Coriolis force at the sin 0 is what is Coriolis force at the equator? If it is, if f is equal to 2 omega sin, omega represents the angular velocity of the earth, phi represents the latitude. So this is 0 degree, 1 degree, 2 degree, 10 degree, right? Okay, so what is sin 0? What is sin 0? No idea. Sin 0 is 0. That means Coriolis force at the equator is 0. Okay? To, to understand this, you know, what you can say is that you just see have you ever played on see so garden? If you sit at the center, you never feel like that you are thrown off. But if you sit at the at the extreme end, you find that you will when you are going to be thrown off. Right? The same thing here, 2 omega sin phi is a Coriolis parameter. That is 0 at the equator and it keeps on increasing at different latitude and in the maximum at the pole sin i is 1 so at the pole it is 2 omega so f is equal to 2 omega at the pole what is the unit of Coriolis force? Coriolis force is not unit mm -hmm. so 2 omega f is equal to 2 omega ok so it keeps on increasing that's what happened here so for the equator when this is south east trade south east means this is south 
this is east. So this is the way it flows, southeast gradient. And if you cross the equator, when you cross the equator, especially if it is around 10 to 10, 15 degrees north, it is being turned to the right by the polar flow force. By the effect of the rotation of the rock. And then it becomes southwest. This is west, and this is southwest monsoon. Right? And then when it goes over the ocean, it carries a lot of water vapor. Correct, you know about evaporation, right? What is evaporation? You know about evaporation and latent heat of evaporation. What do you think that is? Evaporation means what? The water is converted from the liquid state to the vapor state. Vapor state, yes. Okay. And as a result of evaporation, there are two processes involved. One is removal of water, another is the removal of temperature. Means the water temperature decreases and then fresh water is being removed. Ocean is salty in nature, salinity is there. Correct? Ocean has the salt content. But salt is also removed along with evaporation. How do you say that? But how? What is the basis for that? Can you give an example for that? That is the way salt is obtained by heating the sea water. No, 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 that's all science. I'm asking as a layman, I'm asking you. Can you give a simple example? Where is this rain coming from? Where is the cloud? How the cloud is formed? Due to this process. Evaporation and then the wind goes over here. That wind is air mass is saturated with water vapor. And when it comes over here, you have western cards, orographic effect and then it is being lifted and then when it goes to the different levels of atmosphere temperature decreases, transition takes place, cloud formation, precipitation. Rain. Correct? Is it salty any time? No. Rain water. So that itself is an example. That itself is an example that as a result of evaporation, it is the fresh water that is being removed from the sea, not the salt water. That means evaporation needs to increase in the salt content in the water. Okay? So two things. One is the removal of fresh water, another is the decrease of temperature. Evaporation needs to decrease of temperature. Progenity in the pressure distribution. Clear? Spatial heterogeneity. That means between your Arabian Sea, the Bengal, and the land. Yes or no? Spatial heterogeneity. The spatial heterogeneity is due to the intense heating of the land. That is creating pressure distribution, I mean pressure radiation. So one more comment, I will repeat that again. It is the spatial heterogeneity in the pressure distribution between the sea, between the ocean and the land. Clear? Okay. So that is about due to the oxygen. So this is your summer months. Okay. Then, that yeah, is heating. I want to see this is the Tibetan plateau and what is shown here. When the Tibetan plateau is 50 degrees centigrade, over the ocean it is just 3 to 5 degrees in difference. That means around 20 to 21. And that is again 50. So there is a large difference in temperature, therefore heating started. Okay? Yeah. Uh, then next step. I'll come to that later. Let us see what happened during winter. So now the wind is blowing from southwest, so southwest monsoon wind and that is responsible for the precipitation. Correct? Now, what are the different factors affecting this that I have put there, we will explain it. Now, let us see during winter what happens. So, you have, after September you have October, November. This is the transition period. Transition from southwest to northeast. Okay? Transition and then December, January, February, February, and then you have a low power day. So it's basically the monsoon wind is similar to that of your land and sea breeze. Land and sea breeze is during day and night time, but this is during summer and winter. Clear? Okay. Then once this happens, December, January, February, March, you have this northeast monsoon because it is from North East, North East monsoon wind. And then the next summer comes. For that, we have April, May is again the transition from North East to South West. 
So the reversal of things starts not all the time. Rather, it takes almost two months to reverse. Right? Is humid air saturated with water vapor? That's what we are going to bring. Correct? Okay, I understand. Let me ask you something to question. You tell me which is heavier, dry air or approximate? Approximate. Temperature around 3 kilometers from the sun.